It's something about the game of baseball. Maybe it's the length of the season, the way it's played, the speed of it, but superstitions are rampant in the sport, <laughs> unlike in any other I can think of. Alongside Rick Sutcliffe and Pedro Gomez of Madden and Burke. Rick won a Cy Young in 84. I don't know about your own personal superstitions, but what's the best one you've heard of in all your years playing baseball? Oh, my goodness. I mean, some of the characters that I played with in Chicago were, were, were unbelievable. I, I would have to say the one, though, that comes to mind first is Kevin Romberg. Mm -hmm. This guy was a pretty good player I played with in Cleveland, and he had this thing where when people would touch him, he had to touch him back. <laughs> I mean, if he was getting a lead at first base and the pitcher threw over and a guy applied a tag, he, he would touch him right back. <laughs> Same thing at second. I mean, double plays, anything. And, and the funniest part, it's not really funny, really. I think it ended Romberg's career, but Burt Blylevin paid this guy in the stands 100 bucks to come down, ask for Romberg's autograph, and then as he turned to walk off, touch him, and then run. Oh, the man. guy left the ballpark. <laughs> Romberg jumped up into the stands. This is a half hour before game time, and he's trying to get through all these people, and he never caught the guy. In his spikes. And, 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 and I'm being honest with you. I, 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 after that year, I never saw Romberg again. But then in his career, he couldn't touch another it man. It might have. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 he, still to this day, I know he wants to touch that guy. Pedro, you didn't play, but you've covered the sport a lot of years. Tell me one involving Dennis Eckersley. Yeah, I covered Eckersley, and I remember that he told me he had to have, on game days, <laughs> he would smoke two cigarettes. This is after he'd become sober, and it was kind of to calm his nerves. And he smoked one in the second inning, always. <laughs> and then in the top of the seventh inning, he would smoke his second one. Then he'd head out to the bullpen. Get ready in the eighth inning, stretch a little bit, and he was always the ninth inning guy. But if he didn't have those cigarettes, he felt like everything was going to fall apart on him. It was just part of his mechanism. You know, you realize now you got kids wanting to smoke to go to the <laughs> Hall of Fame. No. I want to be like Dennis Eckersley. I'll only no, smoke no, in the no, second not, and seventh not, inning. Not, not, not that, that part. part. You can do yeah. it without the smoking. Paint that outside corner with the heater. That's the <laughs> heater you want to talk about.